The Avelma is worse than you could possibly imagine. Oh my god, let's go. Very bad rendition of the classic Scooby-Doo. Shaggy's voice is horrible. The animation cheap looking and the self-reflexive nature with exaggerated oh, here we traits go and even again. dumbing down the characters along with the constant we lesbian lust know. from Velma are all tiresome and banal humor. Velma's character was completely out of character. I did not like how the creators took much her current. classic personality and turned it into oh someone God, finding their stars. sexuality. This is not what Scooby-Doo was about. Genuinely terrible to the point of being offensive. Genuinely it's like whoever terrible. made it hated Scooby-Doo and hasn't watched the movies pretty much ever. Velma's more annoying than usual and they Deprive Daphne of all personality. Oh wait, sorry. These are uh, <laughs> these are reviews for Trick or Treat Scooby Doo from October of last year. Sorry, hold on. Oh. Okay, here we go. No, this is not Scooby-Doo. Fred isn't Fred. Velma isn't Velma. Daphne is not Daphne. It feel like every other cartoon, straight down to the animation that makes Hanna-Barbera look like Michelangelo. Crimes against humanity. I just have one question. Why? First of all, we have the art style of animation, which is a complete rip off a of family guy. And secondly, we have the characters. The characters are so annoying, especially Daphne. I mean, how could someone like this version of Daphne? She acts so childish? Velma is the worst. Mystery Inc. gave Velma a character development and flaws, which are essential to every character, and made her hot. <laughs> Velma is hot? This dude's just laying out his entire Google search history right here. Velma always used to make me tingle in my jingle. Oh, sorry. Wait, hold on. I'm sorry, but These are reviews for uh, Be Cool Scooby-Doo from 2015. Whoops, my bad. Okay, let's see. Ah. Velma 2023. Oh, dear. So as literally everyone in the entire world knows by now, there's a new oh, Scooby-Doo... A Jason show One that came out on HBO stars. Max called Velma because it's about Velma. I know, shocking, right? And for some reason, the entire internet has decided that it suddenly just really gosh darn cares about the holy sanctity of Scooby Doo. <laughs> like, like, the, did you all even know that there's a new Scooby Doo something that comes out every year? Of course, you all knew really? that because apparently Scooby Doo is just such an integral part of all of everyone's childhoods and their entire personalities, I guess. Which is why all these shows and movies have like three reviews. But I mean, come on, okay? We all know that cared about stuff was for losers, right? That's why I made like 30 videos about Riverdale just to prove how much I totally don't care about it. But okay, so the internet has just completely Whoa, exploded over Riverdale, the last week or what so the, hell? When the first two episodes of Velma dropped. Now, I was gonna make a video about Velma back then, but after seeing everyone's extreme reaction, Action. I wanted to wait until there was a couple more episodes out because like can anyone really judge an entire show based on just the first one or two episodes like come on that's just ridiculous who would ever do such a <laughs> thing but yeah, so I wanted to just wait for a couple more episodes to come out before I pass judgment I love, and answer the uh, important question himself. of is Velma good actually <laughs> no way no. it's good goodness no Oh, wait. Wow, this show oh, is didn't so, get better. It's, it's not even just bad, it's like bafflingly bad. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Well, it's 2023, <gasps> oh brand new year, and what better time to hey, finally start learning that thing I want to be sponsored by Skillshare! You know, where do you start? Sponsor what are you supposed to do? You want to learn like literally any music Sponsor instrument? Self-improvement techniques like journaling or how to get over a creative slump? You want to learn how to make cool stuff for weddings that your friends are definitely going to be jealous of? Well, Bye wouldn't you know, you can learn almost anything on Sponsor Skillshare. Sponsor now, some of you may know, I used to make a lot of video essays on this channel before I started this animation stuff. And I'll tell you right now, true story, I first learned how to do motion graphics and how to use Adobe After Effects from Skillshare. And then I took what I learned from that and applied it to animation, and now here we all are, so. Thanks, Skillshare. What right now, Skillshare, Skillshare has a, a special like offer me. for all of you, okay? The first thousand people who join Skillshare using my link, you get one mm. month of Skillshare for free. Okay, so let's say you do Skillshare for like an hour a day. That's 30 hours of classes Maybe you can get is a cool for free. Idea, so always. if this interests you, I highly creators. recommend you click my link down below, sign up to Skillshare, and start learning something new today. Okay, back to the show. Now, going with what I just said, okay, like, I'm not gonna pretend that I have some deep There's knowledge or appreciation of Scooby-Doo lore, or, like, my entire childhood was somehow intrinsically linked to this franchise of a crime-solving dog. Like, I haven't really watched much Scooby-Doo stuff since, uh, Zombie Island, which came out when I was a kid, which I liked a lot, by the way, but still. I wanted to watch this new show with a completely open mind and judge it solely on itself as a show, okay? Because, like, probably 90% of the criticisms and commentaries I've seen so far are solely from the perspective of, like, how different the characters are in this version versus how they're supposed to be based on whatever iteration of Scooby-Doo this person happens to like the most. So as its own show based solely on oh. itself as a cartoon sitcom. What I was that? Scooby-Doo this person happens to like the most. So as its own show based solely on itself as a cartoon sitcom, I guess you'd call it. Like, yeah, sure. Okay. It's real bad. Okay. <laughs> there is very little to appreciate. 
shit about this show. Well, actually, okay, that's not fair because there is one part of it that I actually think anyone could admit is pretty good, which is the animation. Like visually, the show feels like two different shows, okay? Most of the time, it kind of just looks like every other adult cartoon, I guess. Yeah. Velma, snap out of it. You fed the cat Sophie's prenatal vitamins. Oh my oh, God. Sorry, I was just thinking about mom and only mom. She disappeared at Fred's house, bye. But in the first episode specifically, Velma has these like trauma induced hallucinations whenever she tries to solve a mystery. It's, it's kind of like a whole thing, but it has to do with like her mom disappearing, whatever, it's not important. Anyway, when these hallucination scenes kick in, like the animation team did an incredible job. Oh yeah, I love this animation. trying to solve a mystery, but it's going oh, to be... Cool. <laughs> like, there's this really short part right here where Velma comes up through yeah, the ectoplasm cool. or whatever this is and grabs her phone, and like, look at how smooth and good this looks, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Or the poltergeist thing, like, crawling into her skin, like, man, I tell you, this is some clever, well-done animation right here. So many people mm -hmm. I've seen talking about this show, even like the, the, the self-purported, like, animation fans, that bring up this line from the second episode. Yeah, well, all our classmates are idiots or sheep, so let's assume they're high. Man, if I ever even think about getting into 420, 420 culture, or especially 420 related humor, Damn. kill me. You know what 420 is, right? Um, yeah, it's code for adults who still watch cartoons. <sighs> Oh my God, get out. No, okay, I'll talk about this more later. But like yeah. everyone I've seen talking about the show, they talk about how like it's made by people who seem to hate cartoons. But very few of them are talking about how good of a job the animators did working on a show that seems to hate them, you know? Which brings me to my first point. <laughs> Just another edgy adult cartoon. Oh my god. To be honest, I'm not really the biggest fan of most like American adult cartoons. Like I know there's some really good ones out there, but the ones that are the most popular and longest running tend to be like like I don't know, they're just kind of like regular sitcoms that happen to be animated. I mean like in the Western world True. specifically, cartoons are still by and large seen as like kid stuff, and animation is never regarded as like legit. It's always seen as like easy or disposable, even though like all animation, even bad animation, is kind of a miracle. Like it's easy to criticize animation until you do it and then you're like Oh, this is hard. <laughs> this takes forever. Like Chris yeah. Stuckman came out with a video recently and he was talking about something different specifically, but one thing he said that struck me was how everyone's talking about how the new Last of Us show has broken the video game adaptation curse because it's good, comma, actually. Even though there's been quite a few really good video game adaptations before now. But the problem is, most of those are animated, which the Western yeah, cinema gatekeepers of legitimacy seem to think makes them not worth bothering with, you know? Like you have the 1996 Aww, Street Fighter no. anime movie, uh, Arcane, Edge Runners, the entire amazing. Pokemon Edge anime Runner. Franchise. All of these are video game adaptations, but you know, that's different because those are cartoons. It's only legitimate if it's a gritty live action, just kidding, mostly CG, such and such. And this new Velma show just ah. clearly is produced by these really cynical people who like don't care for animation at all. I mean, when you make a cartoon, the comedic timing and sensibilities are different from live action, okay? There's so much more you can do in that you can do literally anything. One of my favorite meta animation Ooh. jokes is this scene from Gumball. What's going on? I guess it's like what people say. Without money, you're nothing. Yeah, literally. What's wrong with your mouth? I don't know. What's wrong with his face? Oh, what are we going to do? Let's take the bus. Rocky, we need to get to the mall so we can sell out and make a load of cash. Oh, sure, no problem. <laughs> or this scene from Adventure Time. <laughs> okay, now make him look angrier. All right, give me a second. Man, I don't have the patience for this animation junk. Whoever does this must have no life whatsoever. Oof. Oh, Why did I do that? Like, if you're gonna go through oh, all the work of doing animation, fun. and then you make a show where it's just a Big Bang Theory sitcom that relies on all the staging and comedy timing of a totally different kind of show, then like, why even bother? So after watching the first four episodes, it's becoming more and more clear that Velma's character arc is her just becoming less terrible, I guess. Her whole shtick is that she's some kind of Daria ripoff where like everyone else is so stupid and all she does is just make these really bizarre quips about everything. Velma, that's not fair. I'm not just a waitress. I'm also a basic bitch who doesn't even know how to use hashtags. Fred's a rich white guy with a tiny dong. Exactly. I spit truth without a filter, like every comedian before hashtag me too. Look. <laughs> 
The show kind of feels like a Jeff Dunham sketch where like, you know, his whole shtick is that like he makes the puppet say these just horrible things. And you know, that's fine because it's a puppet saying it. It's totally not him, you know? So they have Velma just be the most annoying, offensive character under the guise of her purposely being unlikable. And throughout the show, I assume, given how the first four episodes are, she's going to become less unlikable. Dare I say, likable. And like, obviously it's good to have character flaws and things for them to overcome or whatever, but like, her entire character is just, she says these bizarrely random, like, not even funny things. Like, you can actually do pretty funny versions of the jokes in the show, but they don't even write them as jokes. It's just Velma being offensive and then saying everything like it's a punchline, but there's no joke, she just says things. And nothing but the truth? So help me, Shonda Rhimes, I do. And what did you think of my client? That he was just another entitled rich guy who might kill someone because he has a tiny dong. Your dad is a high school guidance counselor, the lowest form of therapist. And along with all this, like the show breaks the fourth wall a lot. Oh like not God. directly, but the characters Why say a lot of things so that are arrogant. clearly meant to be them Why speaking she's... to the audience, you know? Like usually when TV shows and movies do this, the point is that they drop character and embody the writer themselves, who is saying something as the writer of the show. And Velma, the show, does this kind of meta humor, fourth wall, whatever, like a lot. First rule of therapy, you are as great as you think you are. I have to apologize. She kicked me so hard, my tubes are now tied. Yes, but you hurt her feelings, which is way worse these days. I think it's in portrait mode. Oh God, oh God. he looks like Hitler. Oh and not God. just because we compare everyone to Hitler these days. <laughs> Hilarious. Like the very first thing in the entire show is a group of girls in the school shower talking about how the first episode of every show these days has tons of nudity and things like that. Now, I I'm oh, gonna show yeah. part of the scene here, but I gotta zoom in real close so I can put this on YouTube, okay? So yeah, just yeah, bear with yeah. me. Have you ever noticed how pilot episodes of TV shows always have more gratuitous sex and nudity than the rest of the series? Um, the only hook a good show ever needs is good storytelling. Literally. Then why was your favorite part of the Riverdale pilot when Betty and Veronica kiss? <laughs> See, now if this was a show, it'd be super hot if you two kissed. Now, this idea itself could be pretty funny as like a quick side joke or, or something like that, but they really hammer this into the ground real fast. Like, the scene goes on for so long and they just say the same joke five times. And really, this is kind of just how like the whole show is. So like the character of Velma specifically is supposed to be unlikable, but she says all the same things when she breaks the fourth wall also. So it really just seems like the writers of the show just want to say these things regardless of context or whether it's even funny. I mean, like, I think meta humor can be very funny if it's done right, but the show just solely relies on making fun of hashtags and what if the show was a different show and micro penises and just and like it's not even funny. They just say things. Actually, it's another thing about it, if they make the it show is incredibly unlikable. Like, I mean, purposely, proactively, like the most unwatchable cast of characters. Like Fred is just this literal man, baby. I just hope people can actually think I'm a little kid. Ah, crap! I'm all syrupy. Bathies. Velma is everything I've oh described God, up to now. Daphne terrible. just kind of has like no personality going on, except she's just like the hot pretty girl that Daria Dinkley over here is too good for. Now I've seen a lot of people complain about Shaggy and how he's a beta simp, but like I gotta say, at least for me, I found Shaggy to be the least obnoxious character. Like everyone seems to think that Shaggy used to be some kind of giga chad, but like all he ever did was eat food and then girls would just throw themselves at him for no reason. Yeah. Ooh. Ah, uh, hi, Shaggy. Like, if I didn't know better, I'd swear that somebody's right behind me. But he's a Beauregard! I don't care. I think he's just darling. I mean, every movie was like, hey, check out my cool Adam's apple. Well, so shit, guess what I've been looking for. Now, you can have very flawed characters still be fun to watch. Like, I think South Park is a good example of this. But the show really doesn't want you to like anyone in it. Thank God you're yeah. here. Ah. Brenda's. And to me. Nah, I know. I'm caliente, as this one's people would say. Thank you for helping me find who threw that geode and for explaining geodes in terms I can understand. The hot girls of rocks. Great. Now even just being myself won't work. Rom-coms can kiss my ass. So as part of its uh, meta humor extravaganza, in the first episode, Velma that? makes a semi-fourth wall so breaking boring. clip about the changing of the characters' ethnicities. <gasps> and how do you feel about race-blind casting, Daphne? Well, as an Asian woman, I, um, 
think it's cool. In that now Velma is Indian, Shaggy is black, Daphne is Asian, and Fred is red. Now, I don't think this at that its is core Fred. is a bad choice or whatever, because the ethnicities of the characters has never really a white had male much man. to do with anything of the show itself. You know what I mean? It was more just a product of the fact that it was made in the 60s. So the colorblind casting of the show itself is fine, except that it's not colorblind at all, because like every other joke in the show is about someone's ethnicity. I'm exactly. caliente, as this one's people would say. Fred's a rich white guy with a tiny dong. Why frame me? Yeah, exactly. Why would I do that? Before you just started talking, I, I thought you were our housekeeper. It's so, like you can't go and say your show was colorblind and then mention everyone's colors like every four. Yeah, like you're calling it out. You're making those. Is that supposed to be funny? Like you're offending every single person here. You're doing all those jokes. What is the point? Seconds, you know, also these aren't even jokes, okay? Velma's just saying rude things. Okay, like yeah. real talk, like I'm not some highbrow, not joke. sophisticated Nobody's laughing. savant of comedy, okay? You know, I like a good fart joke like everybody else. But this show is just on par with like, late season family guy. We have found a pattern. Interesting. Each of the victims is hot. Are you telling us life is now even harder for beautiful girls? Gigi and her friends already spend half their days responding to compliments. Thank you, Dad. His name is Gigi's father. That's all he's known for. Spend half their days responding to compliments. Thank you, Dad. That's so nice. show for okay, this show is an adult cartoon we've seen a lot of those recently i think i think it maybe started back with like early uh, adult swim we had shows like home movies aqua teen hunger force even south park a bit before that and now of course we have big mouth aka the only netflix cartoon left apparently because plot twist nick kroll's family are billionaires oh, so God. yeah this is this show ain't going nowhere so velma is an adult cartoon tm because it has a certain art style and the characters who founded say all kinds uh, of cartoon? hilariously edgy Even things if no one but watches actually, it talk they're gonna moms. just keep producing it uh, it's i do nothing. miss my mom uh, prison is cool, but nobody watches me pee quite like mother. But then at the same time, the show's humor level. What the hell is this show? It was cringe. like middle school and the it's characters so themselves cringe. are supposed to be like 15 or whatever. But the thing is, we kind of rely on Daphne to tell us what to do. She's like our queen bee and you're like a, a King Kong. <gasps> Well, so like, is this for teenagers? Because in episode four, for example, the whole thing is about how Velma learns that it's okay for girls to be frumpy, dumpy, nerdy, whatever's, but also okay for them to be hot. Where's the hair I wove onto your arms? It's gone, Velma. This wasn't an exercise in deprogramming. It's an exercise in slut shaming. But you're more than your looks, Olive. You think every Aww. girl deep down is like you, but you're wrong. Your definition of womanhood is even more restrictive than ours. Is it for adults? But you you just said that adults who watch cartoons are losers, and also you totally changed all the Scooby-Doo characters from who they normally are, so it's not for Scooby-Doo fans, so who do you think is gonna watch this show? The show really just kind of feels the like a straw man show that someone would make up when they complain about modern adult cartoons, except they just like checked every box and actually made it a show. Like it doesn't even seem like a real show that would exist. It's more like a fake show that would be in like a family guy cutaway gag. Like something would happen and Peter would be like, all right, geez, Lois. This is this is my uh, this is my Peter Griffin impression, by the way. All right, geez, Lois. Uh, it's almost as bad as that time they remade Scooby-Doo without Scooby-Doo in it. And then it would cut to like this exact show. HBO Max canceled every cartoon they were working on for this okay and like i said throughout the video i do think on oh, paper the show could have been pretty funny but the execution is just i mean woof exactly like i don't think we are offended also, by the art design whatsoever by how the characters are uh, drawn written represented in their colors colorblind whatever like we have nothing against that but the, 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 the story, like the whole script is awful. Awful. That's what we have a problem with. Artistically wise, very beautiful. I really, it's very entertaining for the eyes. But if you can watch it on mute and put some subtitles that have nothing to do with it, I think I can watch it. <laughs> I can watch it like that. That's the only way. Yeah, definitely a miss. I have no... There's season two coming out. What? Who's gonna watch that? Nobody. What was going in their brain? In their mind to make a season two? 
don't they understand listen hate watchers will watch a couple of episodes hate watchers once this cools down they're gonna stop watching after they say everything they have to say they are not gonna repeat it they're gonna move on season two probably first episode people are gonna maybe even and that's it there is no one who thinks it's good come on chris come on guys mm -hmm.